So we just got back from a week-long family vacation. We're able to pull away from the homestead for a full week, and it was awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a great time. And so it's August right now, and the farm is in full swing here. We got gardens that are growing like crazy. We have a family milk cow that's in full milk production. And so there's a lot going on here. And so it can be really hard to coordinate those, those travel times to get away, to pull away. And so we're gonna share our experience of kind of how we plan that out, some things for you to think through if you have a farm or some, some land and some animals and are trying to figure out how to get away. So we're gonna share our experience of how we were able to travel and get away from our farm and homestead. So to be, to be perfectly honest, it kind of felt like all of the stars would need to perfectly align in order for us to make this trip work out and to be possible. Um, and thankfully they, they did. Um, and so the big factor there is the family milk cow. And we get asked a lot, is it possible to travel if you have a family milk cow? How do you travel if you have a family milk cow? And honestly, it's something that we are still somewhat navigating. But in this case, we... Uh, so our family milk cow is currently calf sharing, and so the calf does drink off of her. It would be possible to leave the calf on with her mama and let her nurse off of her all day and night and not separate them. But my fear was if we did that for a full week, her supply might go down significantly. I'm not sure. We've never done it. I've never just left the calf without separating and milking, but that was my fear if we just left and left the calf nurse. I just, I, I don't have a gauge of how much the calf is nursing versus, cause we're getting about two gallons once a day from our cow. And so I just wasn't sure. So I would, I felt a lot more comfortable going if we had someone milking at least every other day or so, um, just to keep her supply up and where we wanted it to be. And so we needed to find that person. And that has been our biggest barrier to traveling up till this point. Um, thankfully, we have wonderful neighbors who have experience um, with having their own family milk cow, so they know how to milk, they know how to milk by hand, and their cow just happened to recently, um, they recently weaned their, their family milk cow because she's going to be calving next month. And so they were kind of in this window of not having a cow to milk on their own. They were missing milk and they actually took total advantage of their opportunity to milk our cow um, to kind of fill that little void space for them. And it was someone that we totally trusted, that had great experience, that we knew well, that we felt very comfortable um, to let that, to let her milk our cow. And so thankfully that worked out for us really, really well this year. Yeah. Turns out not everyone knows how to milk a cow out there. So yeah. that's really, yeah, for us one of the most significant things is is figuring that out. Yeah, and so last year um, we actually had to cancel a trip that we were hoping to take, um, even if we were just going to go for a few days um, because our, our calf was nursing off the cow. So we were hoping that she would still be nursing and we could just calf share and go for even just like three days. Um, while she was nursing, but she weaned herself like a month or maybe two before we needed to go. And so at that point, we needed to milk every day to keep her supply up. So we ended up having to not go on that trip because uh, we didn't know at the time anyone that would be available to milk for us. Yeah. And we've... We realized in that process that that could be actually one of the negatives. So we milk by hand, mm -hmm. um, and that could be one of the negatives of milking by hand. So, yeah, like I mentioned before, we there's not very many people that know how to milk a cow by hand or even that you really trust milking your cow by hand to, to do yeah. it pro properly for a full week and milk her out and, and all those sorts of things. So that could actually be, um, I guess, a, a positive of having a milking machine is it's probably easier to train somebody who's not super familiar with the milking process to do it with a machine versus doing it by hand. Mm -hmm. um, could be either way. If, if you've never, if, if you're trying to find somebody to kind of watch your farm, milk your cow while you're gone, and they've never milked by hand before, I wouldn't feel comfortable 
just right. leaving them with your right. cow and figuring it out by hand if they've never done it before. But with a machine, it might be doable if you could kind of teach them the process and everything yeah. to, to go through. Yeah. So some other things that we have thought of and considered for trying to find someone who might be a good option for milking our cow. I think this is definitely an area where it's just really important to be actively involved in your community, to know other families in your area who are homestead families, who farm, who maybe have older kids, you know, high school kids um, who are responsible. Like this is a great chance to, um, to work with some of those other families or even for you to be generous. And if you know of another milking family for you to say, hey, I'll milk your cow for a week so you can go on vacation. And then would you be willing to return the favor and milk my cow for a week so we can go on vacation or doing some sort of creative option like that to kind of build it into the culture of your community or your, you know, kind of farm community to make traveling more of an option for you and for other families. Um, we have found where we live, we just don't, we just don't know hardly any other families that milk. So thankfully our neighbors who have the milk, like they just got their family milk out recently. So that's been kind of a, they just have delved down this road. And um, so we're thankful for that, that now they have experienced. But prior to this past year, we really didn't know any other families in our current area who had a family milk cow and, and knew, you know, the ropes of milking that we felt comfortable asking to do it. And so that's where, yeah, really networking, putting yourself out there, asking around, trying to get to know other people and families who, who might be able to kind of fill that role and that you might also be able to help out. It could be super, super important if making travel and vacation is important to your family, a priority. So if you do have flexibility around when you're kind of planning your travels out and when you can go, we've found that the best time to do it is before your milk, family milk cow would calf because they tend to dry up their supply for like... Or you wean them. You want to wean them. You wean them and they'll, they'll dry up about 60 days before they would calf. And so if you can time that out properly, uh, you've got a pretty good window mm -hmm. there where you can travel and plan some plan some trips during that time. Yeah, I would say like that first, kind of that first month and a half that they're weaned would be a great time. You probably don't want to go too close to their calving date so you could be home for when they actually calve. But if you went at the beginning of that time that they were weaned, that would be a really safe and good option of a time where you knew that you didn't have to milk. To yeah. go. Especially if you just had one family milk cow, obviously that wouldn't work if you had multiple But One other idea, and I'm stealing this from some friends of ours, but they were going to get a dog several years ago, and before they got a dog, what they did was they came up with a list of, I think it was like 10 friends and family that they intentionally had conversations with ahead of time and asked if they would be willing to watch their dog while they traveled for a, a given amount of And this of is time. a family that traveled a significant amount. Yeah, they traveled a lot, and so they had conversations with 10 people, came up with that list, and so basically they were able to just call on down the line. If somebody already had a commitment and weren't able to watch the dog, you know, that was fine. They'd move on to the next person. But I, I don't know exactly how that translates to homesteading. Maybe it's, you know, at least a handful of, of people that you can ha kind of have this list and have these conversations with ahead of time, whether it's family, whether it's friends, people in the community that you can reach out to and just kind of have that, that list on hand and... Right. These are the people I'm going to reach out to when I know we're going out of town that I know have, you know, we've already had this conversation. You know, they may say yes, they may say yeah. no, but at least you know that they would be willing if they could. It's a, it's a bit of an upfront commitment, like both ways that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you've already taken that intentional step to have those conversations ahead of time. So they're not totally caught off guard when you ask them to like, whatever, milk your cow or watch your pigs or something like that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And another thing we have ideally um, would love to find the right person for we haven't found the right person where we currently live but we have done this in the past is if you can find a responsible you know young adult college student even high school student who is really responsible who you trust who might even be willing to house it or farm sit for you and then they are there and they are watching over everything and it might be kind of a win-win on both ends where they can kind of have a little space and be able to to do that and um kind of 
be there to fully watch your animals in case someone get you know an animal gets loose or you know things happen um, that they're there and you don't have to worry about that. You know, we and that, thought, that really helps you kind of relax on your trip yeah. too. Just knowing someone's there, whatever, close to twenty four seven, and can just keep an eye out on things, watch things. Yeah. So yeah. So what what was our experience like leaving the farm for a full week right in the middle of summer? What did we think? Um, I don't know. I think this is where Jim and I would probably differ in our personalities. Um, it, it felt overwhelming to me, especially upon returning right in the middle of August, right when I'm like overwhelmed by all of the tomatoes in the garden and canning that needs to happen and all of the things that we may have missed being gone. Um, that felt really a little bit stressful and overwhelming to come home to. Um, but, yeah. but the farm survived yes. fine. Like our fruit trees weren't totally overrun by Asian beetles and mm -hmm. they, they're they still hanging in there and mm -hmm. you know, all the animals are doing great here yeah. and yeah, we have a lot of weeding to do and everything exploded in the week that we're gone mm -hmm. in the garden, but it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, we're hanging it's in fine. there. <laughs> it will be fine. Um, I would say it kind of hindsight's 2020, but looking forward to the future if you're trying to plan a trip, I think kind of one of the things that we've talked about is this summer is really good for maybe taking more like weekend trips or long weekend trips um, where you can get away for a few days but not leave for a ton of time. And then if you were going to do a longer vacation, I think our preference would be to do that more so in the off season, in the winter. You still would potentially have to worry about a family milk cow if you had one, but there are less other responsibilities on the farm with gardens. Um, potentially if you're raising like chickens for meat or whatever you're doing. So I know that chickens actually for meat was another thing for us where last year we, another reason we ended up not going on our trip was because we didn't time that properly. So we still had meat chickens that we were pulling twice a day with a chicken tractor and needed to be butchered and we just didn't want to have to have someone else do that for us. And so this year we planned all of our meat chickens to be done and in the freezer prior to this trip. Yeah, the other advantage to doing some of those shorter trips, like a weekend trip or a couple days at a time, is especially if you have a family milk cow, you can probably just do calf sharing for that whole time and just leave if you're, you know, if your calf isn't weaned yet, you can leave your calf on your milk cow, leave them together, and she should be just fine for, for a yeah. couple days. Or even if you have other animals too, generally you can just stock them up, bring, mm -hmm. get, get some extra like feeders and waters in there. And le just for leave them be days. for a couple days and they'll be fine. It, probably the most ideal situation is you have somebody coming and checking just to make sure everything's okay and their water didn't get knocked over and they don't have water for a period of time. <laughs> but generally you can, uh, you know, set things up to kind of just self-run for a couple days at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes a week can be stretching it. I would say one of the... One of the nice things that for us about going for a longer amount of time is it kind of does give you that real chance to just kind of mentally detox and unplug. It gave us a chance to really pursue some of our hobbies and interests that we don't make time for on a day-to-day. -day. You know, Jim got to go for some bike rides. I got to do some sewing projects that I've been wanting to do. Just things that we really enjoy doing but that we don't make time for on our full life here on the homestead. It, it was really nice to have some slower paced days um, without the normal responsibilities that we have to kind of focus on some other things. So we really did enjoy getting to do some some things like that. Yeah, I think the kids really appreciate it too. Yeah, getting some good to get away. Quality, one-on-one -on -one time. One -on -one time. That was good. Yeah, so I think, I think at the end of the day, kind of what we are realizing is that this is still very much an area that we are navigating that this is not something that we have said, okay, this is what we're doing. This is These are our plans every year. We're going on this trip and that's how it's gonna be. I think we very much kind of realize like this is just something that's gonna have to be in flux and we are gonna have to kind of figure out year by year depending on the needs of our farm, the needs of our family, where we are at in a given season and what is going to be best. And so I think for us, um, with our homesteading life, we've just realized traveling and vacation is something that we kind of have to hold loosely and be flexible with, and um, we'd love to make it happen from time to time, um, and that just might look differently in different years, in different seasons, and, and that's okay. Like that, We've just kind of realized like 
that's, that's just going to have to be how it is, and we're okay with that. Yeah, it worked out great this year, and mm -hmm. like we said, the stars aligned, we, we planned it out, it all went according to plan, and it was awesome, we had a great time. Last year, that didn't work out, we, we yeah. tried to go, we wanted to go, and we just couldn't leave the farm, we couldn't leave our property and animals and everything, and we, we didn't have that figured out, so we couldn't yeah. go. And that's just our experience. I would say for you, if you know, like you are dead set on this is what we do every year, like make it happen. Find those people, do those things that you need to do to align it, to to set yourself up so that you can do that every year. I think that is totally possible. It just involves some legwork. It involves being proactive. It involves knowing the right people, finding the right people, networking with the right people, being generous yourself and being willing to help others out, um, all of those things. So I think anything is possible. It just, you have to figure out what your values, what your priorities are. But like most things with home setting, we have found that flexibility is your friend and that is true with traveling. Yeah. Yeah, so with that in mind, we'd love to hear from you. What's your experience been? How have you kind of navigated this whole travel thing for you and your family and pulling away from the farm or from the homestead, getting away and being able to yeah. set things up for your animals and your gardens and everything. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear any feedback you have or any ideas or suggestions you have. And thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today and we'll see you next time.